Alrighty, and here we are at the battlefield for the, the first mission, the patrol mission. Got my handy dandy patrol sheet there. Uh, like I said, these are available for free on uh, the Patreon. If you go and jump on the Patreon, you can download the, the, the pack. I think there's five or six pages. Um, it makes up to about eight missions because you've got like the attack and defense side. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, or, you know, you can pause it on the mission as we play it and read what, what is there. Um, <clears throat> basically, we're on patrol duty, uh, searching the local area for any enemy forces. We've heard that there's some sensor ghosts that need investigating. Um, and so we've got a mobile force that is able to defend itself, it says in the instructions here. Uh, the enemy team should consist of several groups of units. In this case, we've got three like individual units. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, and they can outnumber or cost more of your team for an extra challenge. Now, we've, we rolled, so we got minus 10%. So there's only three mechs. Uh, but they're clan mechs, so they're chunky. Righto, so for the Marek forces for this first Alpha Strike game, uh, we have our Archer, Catapult, Shadowhawk, and Cicada uh, set up for the Marek Militia. And uh, I think it's like 145 points. So they are our first heroes. And they will be fighting the Wolf, uh, Scout Lance, Scout, whatever they're called, Star. They're not a full star. Um, they are about 130-ish. Uh, there's two Koshis, also known as the Mislinks, and a Shadow Cat. Um, you're very light mechs, but just remember, clan mechs pack a bigger punch. Uh, at least they do in Battletech. We'll see in Alpha Strike if that's the case. But there you go. This is our two teams. Where will they be on the board? Find out in this very exciting game that we're about to start playing. See you at the table. Uh, objective. My team wins when they have secured all enemy forces. My team loses if they die before achieving a victory or if enemies leave the tabletop via the deployment zone. So the enemy forces have to leave this way. Between these two rocks. <laughs> have to come off the table that way. Because they're trying to get through. Uh, so I set up, create a battlefield with terrain that blocks line of sight in the center. So we've got our, our trees. Um, I'm saying these ones uh, with the darker trees are heavy woods. And these ones are light woods. Um, uh, and terrain that blocks movement, but not line of sight in other areas. So these rocks, they don't actually block line of sight. They just make it hard for you to move. And I figured, uh, you know, the, the mountains moving up and down mountains... Uh, you know, it, it hinders that. Uh, I deploy in the center on the edge, and then I place three sensor ghosts randomly by using a D6. So, uh, let's let's do that. So the first one goes in quadrant one, which is the back corner. Put it there. The next one goes in. Oh, that's quadrant five. Which is right in the center here. Ooh, right in the trees. Uh, and the last one goes in quadrant four. Also over here. So they're, they're coming from this, this flank of the table. Very nice. Um, all right, special rules. Sensor ghosts, until revealed, sensor ghost tokens have movement speed of six uh, units and move before the player's turn. Each one will move, trying to avoid detection from player units. Uh, when the player was, was within six units uh, and has clear line of sight to the sensor ghosts, it may reveal its activation by scanning. Uh, this reveals the unit. Roll on the following table. So if I'm within six, I can, instead of shooting, scan. Uh, and then uh, it will... There's a table that I have to roll on. It might be nothing. It could be a unit that's revealed. Uh, or it could be half of the remaining units that are revealed, or it could be all of them! Uh, units may not be fired on until after they are revealed. If all units are not yet revealed, respawn the sensor ghost as per setup. So basically, if you, you spawn it, it's not there. Oh well, you just put it somewhere else. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Now, are we going to play centimeters? Are we going to play inches? I think we'll do inches for this one. Uh, I'm feeling inchy. <laughs> Uh, here's our turn counter. We're on turn one, uh, and the sensor ghosts move first. So let's get that done. Now they want to be not detected, and I think this guy in the middle here <laughs> doesn't like being in the middle. So he might um, 
You might quickly jaunt over here into these woods, making his way to the heavy trees. Uh, this guy, he's on line of sight, you know, he, he's blocking. Now, uh, we'll make the mountains, they're going to half their movement. So we'll make them scurry down so he's not seen. Uh, and this guy might just jaunt into the trees. Nicely there. Easy peasy. All right. Now, my guys get their activation. So normally you do your initiatives back and forth. Uh, but, you know. Welcome to RJ's Rangers, where we don't follow the rules in any way. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've played Alpha Strike, so you will have to bear with me. All right. I have a move of... We'll start with the Catapult. He has a move of 8 Jump. So I guess our first order of business is to get these guys... Out in the open, really. So he might just uh, jump straight into the middle here and uh, and try and scan this guy. Is he within six? He'll do his scan of this guy. <clears throat> uh, one to three, it's nothing. Let's go. It's a five. Half of the remaining units are revealed. Um, uh, one to four, it's a Koshi. Uh, it's two Koshis, one, like five and six. It's one Koshi, one um, Shadow Cat. It's two Koshis. All right. Happy days. Chuck him in there. All right, well, that's nice and easy. Uh, and we respawn it. We spawn a third sensor ghost. Boop. In the sixth quadrant, which is over here. And these woods over here. Can you see those woods over there? Yes, you can, just barely. Not the token there. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, he can't be fired on because that's his turn for shooting, I guess, and no melee combat because they're not in in range. Uh, we will move. The Shadowhawk is going to move and shoot. He's not going to jump, though. He's just going to move. Oh, what's his range? Medium. What is medium range in Alpha Strike? It's been a long time since I have played Alpha Strike. He will move there. And, um, yeah. We'll do some, some shooting. Good news, Alpha Strike fans. I'm sure you already knew this. I get to move everything first and then shoot. So, um, yeah. Pretend we don't know that they're actually dudes. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's all right. We still have to identify the rest. Um, I think my tactic is going to be, like, I don't want to reveal the other guy. You know what I mean? Like, we want to keep him because he's a sniper. <laughs> Not that we'd know that, but yeah. <laughs> okay, the archer has also an eight movement. Oh, look, it's almost like they were made to, to move together. And luckily, we are able to avoid these, these jaggedy rocks. Uh, and my cicada, 16 jump, 16, uh, yeah, okay, let's, we won't do 16, we will, in that case, like, you know, just walk him up, <laughs> maybe we'll walk him, we'll walk him this way, so he's kind of flanking, uh, and is he within six of that, no, so we can't scan that one, all right, there we go, uh, on to the shooting phase, ka -chow. Alrighty, so uh, apparently initiative does actually matter. <laughs> so off screen I've rolled uh, two initiatives. Uh, the wolves got a nine and the Marix got a six. So they have the lower initiative. So I believe that means they go first. You have to bear with me, I'm learning the rules. Remember this is all about learning the rules. If I make any mistakes, please, please, please tell me uh, in, the, in the comment section what I've messed up. Uh, obviously, you were meant to alternate movement, but in this scenario, the the sensor ghosts move first. Now that we've revealed them, they will move alternatively. As we go, uh, what am I doing? Yes, so all of the the player with the lowest initiative resolves all their combat first. So that means my my Marics do their shooting things first. So we might start with. Um, the, 
we will start with the catapult. I'm just going to do them in the same order I moved them, I think. <clears throat> so, uh, we need to verify line of sight. Ooh, that's a good question. How many inches is that into the woods? Line of sight. One third of the miniature is visible behind solid. Woods. Units do not receive partial cover from woods or trees. Okay, yes, so we can see them. Verify firing arc. Yes, it's in the firing arc. It's in the front. <laughs> we just moved up deliberately so that it would be the firing arc. Determine the range. Uh, fixed range brackets for all weapons. Uh, units... Upstroke range table. So there's six inch brackets. So uh, we know it's within six inches. So that's a short range. So I should have probably moved these guys. They're all in the short range uh, to, to one of them. Is that in? Yeah. So all of them are in a short range to all of them. Which is good. Determined to hit number. So the player has determined that he has line of sight. And his target is within the attacking unit's firing arc. And within range he can determine... The uh, the firing number. So, for for the catapult, his short range is plus zero. Uh, his skill is four. Uh, let's go through here. So, the base number is... So, I've got this handy-dandy attack modifiers table. I got it off Reddit. Thank you to underscore Greg on Reddit. Um, but if you just search Alpha Strike Cheat Sheet, <laughs> you, you get it. <laughs> Uh, so the skill level is four. Uh, did the attacker move? Yes, he jumped. So that's plus two. So we're at sixes. Uh, did the target move? Uh, did they move? No, they stayed in there, didn't they? Oh yes, they did. No, they did. They moved from the middle to the side. Or did they? I can't even remember. It only just happened a minute ago, guys. What's wrong with my brain? <laughs> Uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them a moving, because you know what, they're, they're on the run anyway, so we'll give them their TMM, which for the Koshi is three, so what we say, we're at nines. Uh, terrains, they're in woods, they got rid of the heavy and light woods, so what I said before about heavy and light woods, ignore that distinction, <laughs> that's a plus one. Um, uh, so what are we up to, tens, uh, attack, none of them, other modifiers, none of them, Physical attack, none of them. Target, none of them. And the short range, plus zero. So we need tens for Mr. Catapult to launch his his business. Here we go. Oh, I dropped the dice. That's a one. Uh-oh. <laughs> Got a bit worried there. It's a one and a six. That's a seven. Seven is not ten. Uh, so that is a miss from the Catapult. Uh, and he takes one heat, I believe, for, for shooting the weapons. Woo! Pew, pew, pew. All right, next. <laughs> Archer. It's going to be the same deal, right? He's got the same skill, the target. He's shooting... Uh, oh, sorry, Shadowhawk is shooting, you know, at the same the same guy. Uh, his skill is four. His short range is also two. Uh, sorry, so you know, two damage plus zero. Uh, so it's the same numbers. He needs a ten. See, he's an Alpha better than Battletech. We'd spend like six years here, uh, you know... Working this out, if it were, oh my gosh, if it were battle tech, but that's pretty straightforward. Well, move back to improve the focus. Thanks, camera. I've got my big noggin in the way, my hand. Not noggin, gubbins. Uh, three and five, uh, three and two is five, which is not ten. So he misses. Though he'd be one less, he only needs, no, he'd be, yeah, one less, because he, no, he'd be two less. So he only needed eight, but still. Eight is not five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Same deal with the archer. Uh, he's also got a skill of eight, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. He does three damage if we actually hit. Ka-chow. Uh, that's a three and a two. Again, five. Man, what is it with this? And the cicada, uh, he... Ka-chow. Uh, with his energy weapons, a four is not... Man, the Marek Militia are not doing well here today. <laughs> so that's them resolving their shooting wow what an exciting time <laughs> let's have a look at the mislicks now traditionally clanners have like a three four 
uh, thingy. But when I set this up, uh, I just took what was on uh, master unit list. So I only have, uh, I I've left them at fours. So these guys are the recruits. They've sent out to get slaughtered. <laughs> Uh, they have also a skill of four. Um, they uh, did not. Move, they they did move. We'll give them like a ground walking movement because they got their TMM to the attack before. They're also in short range, uh, and they will. Oh, these guys! They moved. So their target movement was just ground movement, which is TMM. So uh, this little guy here is going to shoot at. Who would we shoot at? Um, I think they would shoot at the Shadowhawk because it's the lightest of these guys um, and the easiest to take down. So the Shadowhawk's TMM is only two uh, as well, so that's a bit easier to hit, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, let's... Wow, Koshis are fast. Maybe we should have played in centimeters. Anyway, good to know for the future. Uh, so let's go through their attacks. So their skill is four. Uh, they moved, so we'll give them a plus zero. Uh, they, the, the target moved with a ground movement, so it gets its plus two. So what are we on to? Six. Uh, there is woods in the way, so that's seven. Uh, and that's it. So they only need sevens. So this could go badly for old Mr. Shadowhawk. So, uh, question number one, here we go, needing sevens. Oh, look at that, seven exactly. <laughs> so that is uh, two damage to Mr. Shadowhawk in the armor. Bang, bang. All right. And uh, the other uh, Koshi is going to shoot also at the Shadowhawk. Oh, what do we got? <sighs> Another seven. What? Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> Ouch. The Shadowhawk is getting clubbered. Taking fire, need assistance, uh, <laughs> says the Shadowhawk. <laughs> uh, there is no, uh, there is no combat, close combat round. Man, Alpha Strike is like a thousand times better than Battletech. Like, we would still be working out. Like, I know I'm taking my time. I'm sure Alpha Strike players who are watching this are like, man, this is really dragging ass. But you know what? Like... This is so fast compared to what I'm used to. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Woo, we're, we're, we're flying. We're flying. And if I stop just, you know, ranting about stuff, we should be okay. Um, all right. Combat phase. We've done that. End phase. Both players can hear the end phase simultaneously. In this phase, each player executes any miscellaneous actions remaining in the turn, such as removing destroyed units, restarting units that shut down from overheating, in the previous turn, specific rules for such actions may take place uh, during the end phase. After resolving all end phase actions, the turn ends. And you go back to step one, which is initiative phase. So, um, yeah, that's very exciting. Uh, end of turn one. Okay, here we are. End phase, turn one. Uh, so, yeah, I was just sorry. It, I mean... You didn't, you didn't sit around while I read the book for 10 minutes, <laughs> but I did. I just took 10 minutes to have a quick read through. Uh, but so, sorry if I'm like messing up any rules. Uh, it appears that uh, heat, in terms of heat, uh, you don't take heat unless it's like got a special like condition or whatever. Um, if I've gotten that wrong, let me know. Like, I feel like I should get heat for jumping or I should get heat for shooting or something. I don't know. If I've got that wrong and you know about Alpha Strike, please let me know in the comments below uh, because I feel like I'm doing it wrong. But I'm going to assume that the book says that you only take it if you have the overheat special ability or if you get hit by a heat uh, weapon. So I guess that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, we will uh, have a look at... When does it say these guys move? I wrote this. So before the player's turns. So... These orange dots are going to move their six inches, and then we will do initiative. Um, so, these orange dots... I've made a big mistake here, a tactical error, if you will, uh, that these orange dots are able to, um, you know, sneak past my guys. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that might be what happens. Uh, we will see. <laughs> so, uh, in in the trees, they have to move half. 
uh, which I didn't do before, but I should have. Um, so he'll pop out of the tree there, and uh, he's gonna pop out of the tree here, and this guy's gonna uh, go this way and pop out down here into the trees. Um, so that's their maneuver. And uh, we'll roll initiative. So initiative for the, the wolves. It's going to be three. And initiative for the Marricks. It's going to be seven. So they've switched. They have switched initiative. And we'll actually do the alternating of, of things this, this time around. I believe. So. On with the show. All right. The uh, lower initiative moves first. Again, this is one of those weird, like, you know, I know I was saying before that Battletech does it better, but maybe it doesn't because uh, <laughs> the lower initiative has to move first. So we are going to move one of the one of these Koshi boys uh, out of the, out of the, you know, wherever. Um, but the, it then alternates until like you alternate to the other person but if they have multiple, so see, I've got like four and they've only got two. So I have to move two for every one of their move. Um, yeah, so we'll probably end up moving three to the one, I think, if that, if that is my understanding. Because um, we outnumber them by so much. Um, the Koshi has a movement of 14 or jump 12. Um, now, the Clan Wolf are known for being a very aggressive. So whilst if... Raymond was playing this, RJ was playing this, I would just run them the heck off the deployment zone. <laughs> right? <laughs> but um I, I have to be true to Clan Wolf and they th these inner sphere surats standing around are not gonna be tolerated. Um so I think Clan Wolf is going to maneuver themselves in the best possible position. Uh, and also, it's at this point I realise I 100% definitely should have um, used centimetres instead. This board is way too small. But that's okay. Battletech's meant to be played on a small board, I guess. So, even with a 12, like, they, they can just go wherever they want on the board, basically. Um, but we're going to keep them... He's going to keep himself in short range. Uh, and he's going to... I don't know. There's a lot of mechs there. So, I think he might position himself... Oops, moving the trees in the tree so he can shoot out of the tree but not be shot. You know what I mean? Like, he'll get the tree defense, but he won't get it as his attack. Or does he? You know what? No. Scratch that. He's a wolf. He's going to maneuver around. Oh, but they haven't moved yet. Ah, see? Okay. Right. This is... See? It all gets very complicated with you. In, in, okay, so he... One of them is going to end up moving around back here uh, and, and shooting these guys in the rear. Uh, and knowing that as a wolf pack, they're going to work as a wolf pack, wolf pack. Uh, they're going to... He's going to lure them out, I think. That's the plan. He will lure them out to... Um, yeah, that's what he'll do. He will He will lure them out and stand out in the open over here quite a ways. Mm, yeah, because they can move behind him too. They can do the same thing. So he might move over here. Actually, there you go. He's going to move all the way over there. Uh, and that's his maneuver, his move movement. Uh, and then I have to decide who moves now. Uh, and did Marek realize that they're going to try and bum rush him? Do they fall for that plan? And I think this guy is going to move back because I think he has realized the archer. Is the archer the most expensive here? Yeah, the archer has realized the tactical error that I noticed before. And he's going to turn around and... <laughs> And run the other way. Uh, <laughs> he's going to come this way. And, um, you know, just make sure that this back area is defended. Um, <laughs> you know, it makes sense to do so. Uh, yeah, and I think that whole flanking idea isn't such a terrible idea. And we might get um, the catapult. Because he has quite good ranged weapons. Uh, you know... He's doing all right. He will jump to within 12 inches of, of this guy. So he's going to jump up there. That's a jump. 
I should put some tokens on them to see, look, I didn't do my tokens. I'm a naughty boy. Um, I should put them on, but I'm not going to. <laughs> All right. So I've moved to, do I outnumber this guy? Yes, I still have two and he has one. So I have to move the third one. Um, and I think the Sakata is going to do a similar thing. He's going to jump up here too. Get some, get some rear arc going on. Uh, actually, you know what? This Carter, he is going to do that, but that's because he's going to scan, scan this guy. Uh, is his plan? And now it's turned for the Koshi to move, and this Koshi, seeing this poor Shadow Hawk all alone, is going to position himself in this rear arc. Or oh, does he go in the Archer's rear arc? Yeah, he's going to go in the Shadow Hawk's rear arc. Why not both? I say. <laughs> And that is a run. That's not like that's plenty of room for a run. Uh, that is not a jump. Uh, so that is our movement phase. The player with the lowest initiative acts first, uh, which in this case is the wolves, and they resolve all their combat. So <coughs> these wolves are going to. This Koshi is going to shoot the Shadowhawk. Um, even though it's through the through the terrain, um, because if we finish him off, then the other guy gets a free hit on the archer's rear arc as well. Uh, so it's more than six, but within two, with Woods intervening. So where's my handy dandy cheat sheet? He has line of sight. It's in his arc. Uh, I'm going to move the turn counter out of the way so that I can. It doesn't quite work out, does it? <laughs> My dice tray. <laughs> blocking everything. How about I just roll on the table today? Alright. <laughs> we don't have any babies we have to worry about waking up. That's why I use the dice tray. Just in case I have to, you know, wake up, not wake up babies. Alright, so, determine target numbers. He did a move. He did not jump. So, first off, fours. He did a ground movement, which is zero. Uh, the target did a ground movement which is their TMM, which for the Shadowhawk is two. So we're up to six. Uh, there is woods in the way, so plus one. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's seven. Uh, and then that's all we need. Sevens. All right, here we go. Sevens. Ciao. Oh, man, lucky set. Take me to craps, man. I'm just rolling these sevens. <laughs> if you're playing craps with my rolls... Uh, you are on a winning streak if you're smart. <laughs> uh, so that's another another two damage to old Shadowhawk. Now, here's a question for the rules lawyers out there. That puts Mr. Shadowhawk at... Uh, he's taken six damage exactly. I haven't ticked off a structure box yet. So I'm assuming that as no structure box has been ticked, no critical hit is rolled. Yeah? Uh, clarify for me, if you know about Alpha Strike in the rules, I'm guessing there's no crit hit here. Uh, I, that's how I'm going to play it until I hear otherwise. <laughs> but the next hit, he is not having a good time. Uh, <laughs> that's not good for him. Uh, and on to the next hit. Uh, the numbers are going to be the same, except instead of seven... Oh, yeah, no, he ran. So it is exactly the same, but he doesn't have the trees. So it's minus one. He only needs sixes. This uh, this second Koshi is shooting in the rear arc to heal. Oh, wait. Fives. He only needs fives uh, to hit this guy. Here we go. It's a four, and that dice was wonky, but it doesn't matter what it rolled, because even with a one, that would be hit. But for those playing at home, that's yet another seven uh, for your craps board. <laughs> uh, the Shadow Hawk takes a critical hit with its two structure. Um, and I need to now learn about critical hits. Okay, so yes, we have to roll for critical hit. Uh, I roll 2d6, I check a table. Riveting television, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, on the table, 
<clears throat> um, I I want a five or a nine because they are no critical hit. Five or nine. Here we go. Well, like the Marrick guy wants a five or nine. The Wolf guy wants like a twelve unit destroyed. But here we go. What do we got? We got a six. It's not a seven at least. My rigged dice. Uh, it's a weapon hit. What does a weapon hit do? Let's have a look. Weapon hit. The hit. This hit represents the destruction of a number of weapons on the affected unit. All damage values, including those. Uh, for special abilities, have damage values, uh, are reduced to one. For units with multiple attacks, such as dropships, blah, 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 weapon hit, critical hit, reduce the damage of all things by 50%. So everything is reduced to one. Okay. He has taken a weapon hit. Noted. Oh, look, it's got it handy dandily on the chart. Whoa, what a zoom. There you go. Weapon hit. Oh, minus one each. Okay. I'm confused, but okay. Reduced by one. There we go. More. Where is he? There we go. Minus one damage. Okay. And that is their firing phase. Uh, ended. Considering we are getting our butt spanked by the two little guys that are, you know, <laughs> field of view already, this is probably a mistake, but Cicada is going to scan uh, this gentleman here. Uh, here we go, uh, on 1d6, 5, half the remaining units are revealed, or in this case the only remaining unit is revealed, so this is where the Shadow Cat is, spawn him in. Alright, Shadow Cat, spawned in, which means these guys can disappear, they're all fake, sensor ghosts, woo, spooky ghosts. There we go. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my silliness. The spooky ghost is revealed, which means that we now have another target. And also, a big problem to worry about. Can we even see him there? Are you can focus. Focus on the shadow cat. Focus on the shadow cat! Yeah, look at that. Pretty mediocre paint job. Like all my paint jobs. Let's get to more shooting. Okay. Here is where we realize Raymond definitely should have been using tokens <laughs> to mark who moved. <laughs> it's okay. It's not as bad as Battletech. In Battletech, you have to like count how far they moved. At least I just have to remember, did they jump or stand still? So <laughs> they all walked. It's okay. Uh, this guy jumped uh, and that guy jumped. So those two jumped. That's Yes. Tokens. Children, remember your tokens. It's turn two. And here we go. Uh, <laughs> before the Shadow Hack blows up, he is... Shadow Hack? The Shadow Hack? Before the Shadow Hack blows up, he's going to blow up the Koshi. Uh, and so let's work out just exactly what kind of dice rolls he needs uh, to do this. So his base level is four. Uh, he did a ground movement, which is zero. Uh, his target did a run, which is their TMM which for the Koshis is, we discovered, three. They're fast, boys. Got to go fast. Uh, and so what am I doing? Four plus zero plus three is sevens. We, we can do that. There's woods in the way, though. Eights. We can't do that. That's too much. <laughs> uh, do I have any other, like, uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting shot in the butt checks? No. Nah. And then medium range, which is going to be plus two. Uh, so, what did we say? Eights, nines, tens. We're on tens again. We absolutely cannot do tens. Here we go. ka -chow. That's a uh, six. See, look at that. Heart of the dice. You believe you can't, and you can't. Just like Yu-Gi-Oh taught us. Alrighty. The archer, in a very identical position, is going to, um, shoot this guy out. Now, technically speaking, battle mechs have, like, a arc of fire, and they can turn... I don't know, like, in Battletech, what we would be able to do in this situation is torso twist and shoot this guy. I don't know if that's a thing in Alpha Strike. If it is, let me know. I'm going to shoot this guy regardless, because that keeps things nice and clean. Uh, and we only have one Koshi on the board. Or do I shoot... Mm, I'm going to say, I have a shot to the Shadow Cat, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> we'll shoot this one guy. Oh man, I had lined that shot up perfectly. There we go. <laughs> I'd set up the camera perfectly for the shot. So, uh, fours to, is the base target number. This guy did a run. 
So he's on fours plus zero is zero. Uh, is four, sorry. Uh, the other target did a ground movement, which is their TMM, which is three. So we're on sevens. And there is a woods in the way. There is a woods, right? Yes. Line of fire woods. Uh, so that's eights and then tens. We're going to need tens again. Happy days. Here we go. Uh, that is not... Double twos for those playing craps at home. We've got a double two. Uh, four. Four the hard way. All right. So, um, yeah, that's a miss. It's a great laser show. We're just absolutely missing these stupid little things. Which, to be fair, when I play MechWarrior, this is exactly what happens. Like, uh, they, the fast things run around and I just, like, shoot everywhere and absolutely miss uh, the people that I should be hitting. Uh, we're going to get to the catapult next. This, uh, this catapult shot is brought to you by Solo, the big can of Solo cans in the background, which I didn't clean up. Uh, <laughs> Solo, Pepsi, Schweppes, send me a, uh, <laughs> send me a, a thing for sponsoring. I've always said my life is sponsored by Pepsi. I'm always drinking Pepsi. Uh, so yeah, send me, send me some cans, bro. Uh, we'll just move our little turn counter in there. And yeah, so he is going to shoot, uh, the Koshi. Uh, he starts with fours, he will be at medium range, he does not have a thing, and the Koshi did move, so it's going to be sevens for him. No, eights, nines, nines. Oh man, I got excited, it was something I could do. Nines, here we go, <laughs> needs a nine, it's a ten! Uh, yeah, so that means the Koshi is going to take three points of damage being at medium range, uh, and not at long range. And so take that, Koshi. Oh, guess what, folks? This is why they were so hard to hit. <laughs> the Koshi only has three points of damage. So the Koshi is exploded. Yay! I need like a little um, cloud to, to go up. There we go. <laughs> a little smoke cloud. <laughs> He's on fire! <laughs> Um, there we go. So, uh, finally, someone is doing their job right. That catapult can have a promotion. <laughs> uh, and that is the end of turn... Two. Sorry, I was just uh, working out things. Like, uh, is that everyone? The cicada did his scan, so he doesn't get to shoot. Yes, end of turn two. All right, things have... They're going okay, I guess, for the, the Marix. We need to deal with this guy because he's about to scoot off the board, I think. Uh, you know, um, luckily he's Zilbriggan. He must fight. He wants to take out this Shadow Hook before he fights. So this turn, we're on turn three. <clears throat> End phase, we don't have any heat or any other garbage that we have to deal with. I guess we can remove the, the dead battle mech. Um, which, actually, I'm going to leave him there because we have to do salvage. So uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, yes, so blah, blah, blah. Turn three. Here we go. So he wants to shoot. He he, he feels it's his pride. His clan of pride. He needs to, uh, you know, get rid of this guy. Um, shoot him before he can complete the mission he's actually sent here to do. Because uh, that's the kind of thing that clanners do, I think. Uh, you know, role-playing as a clan, that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, the Shadow Cat. Um, I think he's also, you know, he's, he's just seen his buddy fall down. So I think he's... He's looking to consolidate with his buddy. That's his goal. <laughs> the archer here is looking to um, maybe capitalize on squishing this little bug. Uh, this guy wants to get the heck out of there because he does not want to explode and die. So he might be seeking some refuge, I think. If I was him, I'd be seeking some refuge somewhere. Now, in old Battletech, three, like if you had three hexes or three, you know, whatever, inches of more than three of uh, terrain of trees or more than like two or whatever of the heavy terrain uh it would block line of sight but in this case that's not <clears throat> that's not really uh doing what what i thought it was going to do uh i could be wrong if i'm wrong that's what the comment section is for spit vitriol at me you stupid idiot rj why didn't you know so he is going to try and i guess find some shelter from the from the shooting guys and we already stipulated these do not count as shelter they're only for uh like moving uh, so he might have to go and hide in the hills somewhere and um, maybe take some refuge over there. Maybe take some refuge with some longer distance. Uh, the Catapult and Scarra are going to tag team this this dude. That's the plans. Here we go. Initiative for the Wolves. Why am I talking so much? 
Who knows? Good job, Dice. You went directly behind that. Five for the Wolves. So that's quite low. They've been pretty consistent. They've had five a couple times now. Uh, and 12. Double sixes. Box cars, baby. Uh, which is not good. We want low initiative because we want to move first, right? Uh, and we don't want to be shot at first. Uh, we want to shoot first. So that is, uh, that is the plan, I guess, anyway, uh, to, to do that. So, uh, okay, let's, on to movements. Let's talk this strategy through. Um, if we move this guy, uh, he does not get a chance to see where this guy's going. So he's going to be the patient hunter and wait until that guy has moved. And this guy is going to move himself in a position to also capitalize on that, I guess. What is the movement of a shadow cat? Is probably a question that's on all of your lips. And I will tell you that the answer is 16 or 12 jump. Six. Th these clanners are so fast. I definitely will be using centimeters from now on. 16 move. <laughs> Far out. <coughs> I don't understand because, like, um, you know, Battletech is played on an A3 sheet of paper. How are you getting 16? I guess because they've scaled it up, haven't they? That's, that's I guess, what they're doing. All right, they want to come, he wants to come down here, but he knows that the Shadow Cat's going to run away somewhere. So he is going to put himself... Let's... Now, obviously, you know, like we lose some inches for the movement side of things. He's going to put himself there, I think. You know what? He can even get much closer. Because remember, their goal is to get off the edge of the table here. So that is that is their goal. So that is his movement. Now, uh, the Marrick guys, I think they're going to move... Do the cicada and the catapult because they are, you know, hot on hot to trot on this guy. Uh, they will move uh, eight jump or sixteen jump. Well, why would he not just? He's gonna jump. Uh, just to clarify, that was a run, not a jump for the for the guy as well. Right, he's gonna jump there. Oh yeah, a bit of payback for the old buddy, buddy. Uh, so that's a jump from there to there. Um, and this guy only has eight jump. Uh, he is not going to jump. He's just going to walk down, uh, walk down, and he'll lose two for going down the hill. Because that's what we said the hill does. It reduces the movement. Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> He's going to manoeuvre himself into the woods a little bit. Ah! My woods keeps moving. The, the Ents are on the move. Alright. My goodness. <laughs> it's too much flock. This is what happens when you use too much flock, children. Learn your lesson. Uh, yeah, so that's entirely redistributed the geography of the thing. The idea was that he was moving into the trees so that he would not be in line of the trees to shoot that guy. <laughs> Alright, which means the Koshi now has to move. Um, so the Koshi is going to, what is the Koshi going to do? He is going to move, he really wants to get this guy, so I think he's gonna, and I think he's worried about this guy too, so what he might do is, he knows his buddy's got here, so he's going to try and flank him, right? He's like, we have to, as a pack... Take out this stupid uh, Shadowhawk. And he falls for the same trap that his buddy did <laughs> by going out completely in the open. Uh, maybe he won't go completely open. Maybe he'll go here so that he's on the edge. He's on the edge. He can shoot out. Uh, and, and there we go. That's that's the plan. Um, right. So, the Shadowhawk. <sighs> he is going to... Leg it. <laughs> he has one hit point left. Like, a big part of me is like, he should totally go in the rear arc and shoot the Koshi, but he is going to try and get out of um, line of sight, I think. He has a 10 jump. Oh, it's not going to be enough. I'm just going to quickly look at partial cover. I'll tell you, what, we'll move the archer, then we'll do partial cover. If partial cover is a thing that is useful, he'll get in the water. If it is not, he will go behind the hill. 
Okay, so water if partial cover is a thing, behind the hill if it's not, or at least try to get behind the hill. All right, here we go. The archer is gonna, he wants to stump this bad boy. So he will also do that. How long has the archer got to move? Eight. So he's going to navigate between these rocks and uh, go there. Actually, you know what? He's gonna stay where he is and torso twist. <laughs> he's gonna rotate and uh, shoot this guy instead. I changed my mind. All right, here we go. All right, so I have discovered two things. The first thing is uh, that yes, his water is partial covered. Now look, this, uh, I, I, when I made these uh, water pit bits uh, and the same for the swamps, I made them with Battletech in mind. So they've got like a depth, sort of a darker blue for where the depth is. Uh, so he's in the depth. He's got his partial cover. Happy days. But the other thing I discovered was I, what I was talking about with the light woods and stuff before is true. If it's, it said if it's more than six inches of woods, if it's more than six inches, you get seven inch advantage uh, available on Redbubble. Uh, <laughs> so, rj.net slash Redbubble. Uh, you get your seven inch advantage. But uh, the seven inch the advantage of that seventh inch is they can't shoot you. So if he wanted to, he would need to bury himself um, six inches deep in uh the the clunge of forest that is there so that is five inches so you can shoot through that one the only forest here that's wide enough is this this far one that you can't see that i'm measuring on there this one is too short so good to know when we use centimeters that will be more relevant but there we go uh so Shooting phase, starting with the lowest person shooting first. So that's the wolves get to shoot first. So uh, we'll start with Shadow Cat. The Shadow Cat is going to shoot, as he said, uh, the, the, the Shadow Hawk. It's a shadow on shadow battle. Shadow boxing. I remember that being a movie or something. I know shadow boxing is like, was a really big deal in like the 90s if the start of diet welcome to rj's ranges where rj goes off on tangents about god knows what uh, <laughs> the start of daha 2 is like the bad guy shadow boxing in the nude <laughs> it's like what the heck is this guy on uh so yeah i don't know why he's doing it in the nude but there you go he obviously didn't have any workout clothes and wanted to keep his his other clothes fresh before he took his airplane flight shadow on shadow match <laughs> stop talking and just shoot you're all shouting at your screen the shadow cat's skill is for uh the attacker he did a run so he gets a zero it's just the ground movement uh his opponent did a jump so his opponent is the Shadow Hawk, which has a team MF2, and it's plus one because he jumped, and plus one being, uh, that makes it three. So we're at sevens. Uh-oh. Uh, and he has partial cover, which is plus one, apparently. In the book I have here, it says plus two, but uh, this has been, this sheet has been updated for errata, is my understanding. So, uh, he is, um, yeah. Plus one. Sorry, I'm just reading this. If the attacker is also underwater, uh, all that was on the water surface using the TOR special, all underwater ranges are halved. Okay, I don't know what that means. Anyway, <laughs> and the distance is going to be... The distance is going to be... It is long range from him to that. So, what do we say? Sevens plus one is eight plus long range is uh, plus four. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, that means I need double sixes. He needs a double six to shoot this guy. He's a sniper, though, with his gas rifle. He can do it. Oh, not boxcars. Pew, pew. Uh, and he's about to get a cicada in his butt. So that'll be very exciting for him. Uh, this guy is the... Is that his firing arc... He's just out. He can't get his target. What a pity. I'm sure this guy is cheering. So I think he is going to have a crack at the... Yeah, he'll have a crack at the archer who's out in the open. Um, uh, yeah. So the archer did not move. He did move. He's got a four uh, and he's got a run. So zero. The archer did not do enough movement to get his TMM. Uh, so, so far we're on fours. 
Uh, but we'll give him a we'll give him a five for the 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 train the trees. And is he within? Whoops! Bump the thing, man. It's right where the camera is. Ah! <laughs> oh no! Uh, because I opened it too far. That's why. He is oh just outside of short range, so it's going to be medium range, so plus two. So he needs sevens. Here we go. Chow sevens. That's a ten. Uh, that will do it. So Mr. Archer will take uh, at medium range is two damage. That's okay. The Archer has plenty of hit points. All right. And that's their shooting. Now the shooting of these guys, uh, the, the Mariks. Uh, let's, let's maybe get some nicer camera angles because I've definitely messed this. It's time for payback. That was a terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation. Uh, the Shadow Hawk is going to shoot the Koshi. The Shadow Hawks uh, got a skill of four. The Koshi did a movement, so it is its TMM, which we said is three, so that's sevens. Uh, he is shooting the rear arc, so that's sixes, but it's in a tree, so that's back to sevens. And no doubt it will be short range, but let's double check that and not knock the camera over this time. Yes, it's in short range. So here we go. Uh, is there anything else we need to consider? No, I don't think so. Uh, he's got minus one for his damage. Uh, so at short range, he'll be doing two, which is a pity. He wanted medium range, so he gets that extra one. So he'll be doing one point of damage to the Koshi if he hits. Uh, and you can't see that roll, but it was uh, eight. So what did we need? Yeah, that's what we needed, right? Done. Dunsky. He takes a point of damage. Pew, pew. Take that, Mr. Koshi means he doesn't have that much left to to be be had all right now uh i was gonna go archer to kochi but what i think we will do is uh i i think the archer who for some reason i feel is the commander just because his mech costs more than everyone else um though it, according to skill level it probably should be the catapult over there uh <laughs> i think he's gonna wait because we will see what happens to the cicada and the Cicada, if it kills the Shadowhawk, he'll go for the Koshi. Otherwise, he'll go for this Shadowhawk. Because I think he realizes uh, this Shadowhawk is mighty close to the table edge. Um, so, the Cicada has a four uh, skill. Uh, the Shadowhawk has a TMM of three. Uh, and it's in the rear, so plus one. It's definitely short range. <laughs> uh, now, the Skata did a ground movement. Or oh, did he jump? He did a jump, so that's plus two. So we say four, three, seven, minus one is six, plus two is eight. There's no terrain. We need eights. Here we go, eights. Oh, it's a six. Ripped off. Uh, so, yeah, good thing that Archer didn't shoot. The Archer will do his shot now, too. Uh, he did not move. He has a skill of four. Uh, the other guy moved enough to get his plus three, so that's a seven. And there is no in in the way of, of that. So here we go. Ciao. Uh, that's an eight. So that is a hit. And the archer does... How much damage? Oh, we should have checked the range. I'm sure it's within short. Oh, maybe it's not a hit. <laughs> He's just outside short range. <laughs> Let's do that math again. So I got an eight on the dice. Uh... Four, plus three for the movement, and then plus two for range. He missed. Is that right? Four and three, seven and two is nine. He missed. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, he didn't want to hit his buddy. That's why. All right. <laughs> oh, so close. Okay, the catapult will uh, hear the order from the archer and also take a crack at, at his buddy here. Uh, you know, we got Complacent. We got Tiggy. Uh, it is going to be in medium range. Uh, so we are going to have four plus three. Uh, there's no terrain. Plus two is going to be nines. Again, here we go. You're all like, do maths. Oh, look at this. Look at these rolls. This is how I roll, right? Like, uh, this isn't for the count. This is just my dice. This is what happens to my dice when I play games. 
<laughs> I statistically get far fewer uh, pluses than I should get. Um, yeah, it, it, role play wise, we'll say he's trying not to shoot his cicada buddy, who for some reason their legs are like way back where. Um, but there we go. All right, well that's all my guys shooting. Uh, we might have a little kickoff over here. I'll just have a look at the at the rules for kicking. Oh no. I have bad news for all you soccer fans out there. In Alpha Strike, you can only do one attack. So there is no kicking. There is no kicking phase. Um, so the Shadow Cat's butt remains unkicked. On to turn four. Where does the time go? I just looked at the clock. Oh my goodness. Don't know how it got this late. There you go. <laughs> it's almost time for me to clean up before my kids come home. So... Um, yeah, turn four, very exciting time. Uh, I think this wolf realizes, you know, uh, things are bad. So he's going to start making his way off the table. Uh, and this guy is still in the heat of passion. Uh, he's, he's going to fight on, I guess. Um, and maybe try and get the shadow hawk out, out of the thing. Uh, these guys... Now, the Shadow Hawk, uh, Shadow Cat has quite a lot of hit points for a medium mech. Like, it's quite, it's quite resilient uh, in terms of Alpha Strike. It's got six, um, which, you know, I'm sure that's not a lot for you, but I think, yeah, he's not going to be able to destroy all these guys, but it means that if we add up all the damage, the Archer... Uh, like, I've, everyone needs to hit, and the archer needs to be one of those people, right? <laughs> that's how, that, that's basically how it has to work. Um, because, oh, if, if the catapult and the shadow hawk, no, wait, the shadow hawk's at minus one. Yes, yeah, so if just the catapult and the cicada hit, no, no dice. It, it will still survive enough. Um, so, we have to make sure that we, we get him this turn. So, this is the final turn. The fourth and final turn of the game. I think four turns is a good time limit. What do you think? I don't know. Let's do some initiative. The Wolves. They have an eight. Uh, we really want to take the initiative, Marek. Roll low. Six. We get to move first. Um, so, that's that's the plan. Here we go. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to do it right here. <laughs> uh, he is going to block off that area um, and I think we'll activate the shadow yeah the shadow shadow hawk will just move back in the water um, to keep himself a bit distant from the Koshi not that it's going to matter for the Koshi he's he can go anywhere um, but there you go in fact that's he we will activate the Koshi's movement now and we know the Koshi has the movement to do that he can do that. <laughs> uh, that will be a run as well. That's not even a, a jump, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So he will run into the rear arc of the the, the Shadow Hawk. Uh, that then leaves us a Cicada and a Catapult to activate. We will activate the Catapult for sure, uh, who has an 8 jump. He's a bit slower because he's an older mech, you see. Uh, he's just going to run, though. He's not going to jump. He's just going to... Oh, if he does that, he's going to end up shooting his buddy. Uh, and... Yeah, the Shadow Cat is going to make his way to the edge of the table. If he is uh, still alive, next turn he gets off the table and wins the scenario for the Wolves. Um, yeah, and that's why I like this game, right? Like, they are outgunned, they are outmatched, but you know what? They're probably going to win. Uh, on to shooting. It is all to play for, and you can see my hideous couch in the background, the old 70s couch. <laughs> uh, it is all to play for here um, with them trying to take out the Shadow Cat. I realize I have left my dice all the way over here. They're all in short range. They're all up close. We'll start with the archer. Because if he does not hit, things are going to go badly. <laughs> so he's got a four. 
this guy did not really... Oh, he moved enough to get a TMM, I guess. That's three, so that's sevens. Uh, and the attacker, he moved, so he's a zero. Uh, and that's it. Short range. Here we go. So what's that? Threes. Plus, it is three for a Shadow Cat, right? Yes, three for a Shadow Cat. Uh, so, yeah, sevens. Sevens, here we go. Ciao. Oh! What? What? This is how I roll. That's not, like, I haven't done this multiple times until I got double ones. I got Snake Eyes. I got Snake Eyes. That is what I got. Friggin', friggin' Snake Eyes. <laughs> On the one shot that mattered for my team, I got Snake Eyes. Oh my goodness. All right. So, um, that's a miss. <laughs> Let's move on with our lives, I guess. Oh my goodness. All righty. Not that it matters, but the Catapult. Uh, I should have left him at medium range too. So, I made a big mistake with the Catapult. He should have been at medium range so that he could actually do something. But here we go. The Catapult, he will also need... Uh, the, what do we say, sixes? Ah, oh, there we go. He got a nine. So, that is two damage. Oh, Shadow Cat. What are we doing? Alright. And the Cicada. Chirp, chirp. Uh, chirp, chirp. <laughs> sixes. Uh, that's a six, so there is two. So there is... There is only one hope for this. There's only one hope. Our only hope is that the Shadowhawk can somehow do damage. Um, actually... Oh, he's not at medium range. He's gonna be at long range. If he's at long range, he can't... He, we can't win. It's not possible. No can defense. Oh, look at that. He's just out. If I had have left him where he was. Oh, rude. Uh, it doesn't matter. He can't. We can't win. There is no winning. All right. Let's see what happens with the Koshi and the Shadowhawk. <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful uh, shot we've got there. If that's not the thumbnail for the video, I do not know what is. So, uh, the grudge match between <laughs> these two is gonna, gonna go on. Uh, this, this Koshi is, uh, gonna have his shot because everyone else is focused on the Shadow Cat. He gets his chance. Uh, he has run. He has a four base. He ran, uh, which is a zero because it's just ground movement. The other guy moved. Uh, which is his TMM, which is only two. Uh, he is in the water, which is plus one partial cover. And uh, so what's that for? Zero, two is six, sevens, and it's in short range. Oh, and it's in the rear arc, so it's only sixes. Here we go, sixes. Ah, oh, that is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a mighty explosion, the Shadowhawk also goes down. <laughs> oh, rip. Ripperonies. Um, yeah, we're going to be needing that salvage money. <laughs> okay, the Shadow Cat gets a chance to shoot. He does not need to shoot across to the uh, Shadowhawk because it's dead. So who is he going to shoot here? Who can he actually damage? <laughs> no one really enough to make a difference, I don't think. What's the Shadowhawk's damages? Three? Yeah, no, he can't really make a difference. Uh, but he might take a pot shot, for it. pot shot off at, uh, you know, his buddy, the Archer. Uh, you know, just as a distraction, so he can leg it off the table. So, uh, he is badly angled. <laughs> He moved his TMM's... Uh, so his skill is four. The other guy moved TMM three, sevens. Uh, and then that's it. Sevens. Bam. Oh, and of course he hits. Man, these clanners. You just can't stop them. Three damage to the... Uh, to the old Archerino. And uh, that is the end of turn four. A brutal round. 
And as we start turn five, there is absolutely nothing that the uh, the other team can do to stop uh, them getting off the edge of the table. So, <laughs> good game. The Wolves win, which ironically is, I guess, how how they win in the law too, right? Like, they just push through. Look, you can see my ugly couch in this shirt too. <laughs> I love it. I love how, like, cheesy and old looking it is. Uh, yeah, so, congratulations, Wolves. Let's do some rolling for salvage. Uh, not that we really should get salvage, but... So, here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to roll a d6, and that is going to tell us... Um, it's a, technically a d3, right? One, two, three. That will tell us how many parts of a Koshi we get out of three. Um, so here we go. And so that's one, we get one Koshi part out of that. <clears throat> Let's see how many parts of the, of the, of the battle mech we get as well. Uh, Shadowhawk, one. Okay, so we need to get two parts of a Shadowhawk and one part of a Koshi. <laughs> brutal thank you for watching and uh yeah i guess i'll see you in the next video i don't know what to say the Marrick militia got stomped <laughs> uh it is a very tricky match if you do play this one at home just be aware that like uh you know getting off that board edge especially if you've got like fast recon mechs that's a big deal now i probably made the big mistake of going like the short edge you can see like the table is longer than it is wide so i should have had like you know the edge to edge like that edge not like this edge to that edge i should have done the long edge is what i'm trying to say i said that that's the sentence i said it i what, what's wrong with me what is wrong with me what is wrong with me uh so there we go that's what it said uh here we are we're, we're at the end of it and um yeah if you play this at home just keep in mind that for future reference we will be doing uh centimeters on these tables because they're quite small. Hopefully the camera angles were better. I felt like they were better filming this. Hopefully you feel the same way. So please let me know uh, than being over on the on the table. Whilst the table is nice to have, uh, I just I get more access. As you can see, I've got like the whole setup going on there. Uh, and that kind of works, I guess. But I can't do it when the kids are around. So there you go. Have a great day. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video when we'll play some more Alpha Strike. Ciao for now.